Since we're on the topic of game development, oh, game, game, game supporting, let's talk a bit about game development. So, I've been going on a bit of a side quest recently, um, learning the Godot game engine, starting to do some programming again. Uh, I, I've done some game development in the past, and first time working with Godot, I really like Godot. Uh, my, my primary experience with game development was with Unity, um, Unity, I, look, I don't, I don't hate Unity, but, I, look, I don't have enough, I don't have enough experience with Unity to hate Unity, but Godot really clicks with me, and I think it's the fact that, <laughs> I think it's the fact that my, my, like, primary programming experience was OO, and the entire structure of Godot is, like, built around OO concepts, and it just, it just immediately clicks with me. <clears throat> I've been going through, um, Brackies has a video on, I've mean, been doing it for like a little bit now, um, but Brackies has a video on, or a couple of videos on Gundo actually, um, I'm gonna slowly make my way through this one as I mess around with some random other stuff as well, um, really good starting point, um, I also went through a, there's like a, a, like a tutorial in the Godot docs about GDScript, which is their scripting language. The language is basically Python. If you know Python, you'll pick up GDScript in like very little time, or JavaScript, very, all very similar sort of structure. It's a very lightweight language, very syntax, syntax averse, we will say. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to pick up. Um, <clears throat> so, it, 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 you, like, if you've not done it, you'll work it out pretty quickly. Uh, I've got some ideas for things I want to do. Um, I kind of want to, I, I, I kind of want to be one of the people who have made a Tux video game, and I've got an idea for one that I want to mess around with. I don't know how long it's going to take me. I don't know if it's a good idea. I don't know if I'm going to give up, but it is fun to be programming again. Like, there was a, there was such a long time where I just wasn't. And, like, I, I really enjoy programming. And it's not, it's not like just a, a career thing, right? Like, I, I just legitimately enjoy doing programming. And I'm kind of sad that I didn't do so for so long. So it's, 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 it's nice to get back to it. It's nice to just, it, it's nice to be doing something different again, right? It's, it's, it's same, same, but different, right? Like, Yes, program is not a new thing to me, but it's it's a it is a change of pace from the way I've been doing things uh, for all this time. It's a nice new hobby to pick up or new old hobby and break up the monotony of what I'm doing day to day. I guess that that's sort of where I'm at with it. <clears throat> and if if you want to like try it out as well, I would recommend picking up that video. Uh, he links oh, like picking up like checking out the video. Um, he links over to a, a course as well that goes into like shader development and things like that. I'll probably work through that as well as I've got some other ideas I want to do. Um, will I release a game on Steam at some point? I don't know. I, I again, my my first thing that I want to do is I've got a I've got an idea for a Tux game. So this is going to be me doing everything myself. I want to learn like pixel art. I want to learn how to do music. Uh, is it going to suck? Probably do I want to do a, a chiptune version of the free software song? Yes, because it would be funny. Again, these are all things I've done little bits of in the past, but I've never sort of really been committed to to actually like learn the process. It's like, oh, when I was on Mac, I would open up GarageBand and fuck around a bit. Or, oh, I'm going to make some pixel art for like a project for university. But I've never really sat down and like, learned the process like what do you actually want to take in consideration when you're doing pixel art how do you want to how do you want to size things how do you want to handle your color palettes things like that um and hey i don't know maybe 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 i pick up maybe i turn game development into like a a more a more long-term thing i don't know right now like i think a lot of people they they value their time too much I get, 
Maybe that's not a good way to put it. But they don't want to be doing anything that isn't monetarily viable. You know, you see these people where it's like, every second of the day, I have to be doing something that I could be making money from. And I get it, right? But at the same time, like, I think it's 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 nice to just do something that doesn't really matter. And you see this a lot in... I, I saw this post on Reddit the other day, actually. Um, this person... I wonder if I can find it. Um, this person was complaining that, like, they don't know why there's any reason... Yeah, yeah. Um, this one here? What is even the point of programming? So, this is someone talking about, hey, they're learning to code, but they see this... Like they've been doing some Lua, HTML5, CSS3, a lot of Rust. They're learning ARM assembly. And they just want to, like, quit coding altogether. Because you're seeing how much, like, how good AI is getting. How, how a lot of companies, even if it's not perfect, are willing to just adopt AI. You're seeing Meta talk about it. You're seeing all these companies talk about it. And they're like, well, if I can't do it as a career, is there even any point to learn how to code? And I, I don't think the FOSS world is going to go through this issue because the FOSS world is fundamentally volunteers doing volunteer things, programmers wanting to fix their own problems, and people who just enjoy programming for the sake of programming. I do think like, big projects are going to have to sort of answer the question of whether they do or don't want AI code. But I, I always think there will be people that want to just have fun programming. But the field of programming, this is a, a problem that art is going to run into as well. The field of art, especially when we talk about, like, corporate art. Um, What is it? Is it, cor is it called Corporate Memphis? Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this fucking art style... Corporate Memphis art style, like generic corporate art style. Anybody who does this style of art, they've probably already been fired. And they were probably fired like two years ago because AI's been able to generate this for so long and it wasn't... It's not really a creative endeavor. It's like you're paid to make just absolute slop. The kinds of like corporate art jobs like this are basically fucking cooked. And I feel like the same is going to happen with a lot of the the code monkey jobs, where your entire purpose is build some very simple API or maintain this thing. Like, a lot of those jobs which consist of a lot of boilerplate-y things, I think in the very near future you're going to be seeing a lot of those jobs disappear. And I don't know how that's really going to work out, where you sort of eliminate the junior position, and then you have to, like, somehow immediately go from grad to senior. Like, how do you make that jump? And people who are talented programmers are going to survive in this world, but getting into the field is going to become a lot harder. And the same thing with, like, the same thing's going to happen with art. Getting into the field is going to be very difficult, but if you're established and you have, like, a style and people want you for that style, you're still going to have a position. It's just, how do you become established when the, the entry point is gone? What's that going to mean long-term for the industry? We'll see. Um, <laughs> we will certainly see. But I, I, I don't think, like the idea of the cabinet maker, right? Like, the cabinet maker as a job is a very niche job now. Because most people that want a cabinet, they will go to Ikea or some local furniture store, buy a cabinet. But there was a time where that wasn't a thing. You want a cabinet, you go to the cabinet maker. Or maybe an even better example, someone who fits horseshoes right? When everybody, okay, not everybody, when, when everybody that needs, that can afford transport is using horses, those who are making horseshoes and those who are fitting horseshoes 
that's a, like a, a, a consistent business. Nowadays, though, horses are a very niche, very, like, specific kind of thing to have. And I, I do feel like the same thing is going to happen in the art industry, where it, a lot of it is going to stop being an industry. And people who want art made is going to become a lot nicher of a thing. And the the baseline to become someone who people actually want art from is going to go up as for the general generic kind of art like you know you want you want some fucking fairy some fairy porn most fairy porn artists are not great at doing so and ai is going to replace them very quickly right <laughs> Well, like, a lot of those, like, very low-end commissions, a lot of that is going to vanish. I don't think this is a good thing. I think this is a reality of what is going to happen. I think that it's going to become a lot harder to establish yourself, and people who actually do want to do this are going to have to accept the fact that there's not going to be anywhere near as much work, that they are going to have to do this as a hobby, and the people who are going to stick around in it are going to be those who are really dedicated to actually doing this. Like, really dedicated to, I want to be an artist. The idea of the starving artist, uh, you're going to start seeing the starving programmer.